I'm fishing for big whiting at the turn of the tide. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne. Today I'm fishing in my local lake in the slack water at the tide change, which is a really good time to fish. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm doing. Make sure that you like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get started. Now, first things first, I've actually got to catch some bait. So I've come down, I'm not going to fish for a few hours because the tidal change is actually high tides about four o'clock this afternoon and the slack water will probably be a good hour and a half after that. So I've come to get some bait first and I'm going to catch some squirt worms which are an absolute delicacy for big whiting. So yeah, it's fun, it's fun just doing that in itself. So just going to get into that now and catch a bit of bait. Now I have um, my yabby pump and my sieve, which I use for catching yabbies, but it's also very effective for squirt worms. You don't go very deep when you're going for squirt worms, you're just really going in the surface. Now look at this. In fact, there's one on the edge of the, um, of the noodle, and you can see there's a couple more in here. See, I've got one that's inside its casing. There's this guy here, which I'm gonna try and grab. You can see him moving there and wriggling. See, there's a couple of other ones in here, there's a few. But you can see that's a reasonable sort of worm, that guy. I'll just lift my hand up, he's gone over the edge. <laughs> Look at that. Now that is a squirt worm, also called case worms. And there's, you can see in here, there's still a couple in here that I haven't got. And you can see all the casings, see the like the little bits of casing that are in here. And then over here where I'm pointing here, you can see, actually I can see a worm climbing out the bottom. Where is he? Oh, they're in here somewhere. They're quite delicate. Oh, there, 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 there he is. There's one. Look, look in there. Man, there's more in here than I realised. Look at that. Look at them all. Look at that guy. Man, they've all gone around the edge of the... You can see those worms. Wow, amazing. That was in one short little pump that I got those worms. These exist in most lakes, in the sorts of places where you find the nippers slash yabbies. So I've got about five, well there's a couple, you can see them, there's one in its case, there's one that's hidden in the sand, but I've got about five in that first little go. So I don't really need all that many for bait, so I'm just going to walk around here, put my sieve down, and just a little shallow, only a few inches deep. Just do a little suck. So look, look at that. See, I can see here there's one good one right there and another one, two good worms just there. So they, those guys look great. Yeah, so I mean, I'm only going to use a really thin um, worm hook and not a very big one because they're quite a delicate bait and you've got to be a little bit gentle with them. But I, my theory is that whiting, if you're aware of the profile of a whiting, their mouth, they've got a snout that comes out and their mouth is on the underneath side of their snout, which tells you that when they're eating, yeah, it's not actually straight in front of them, it's actually, and you can actually see them sometimes swimming along in the sand and they're digging into the sand with their nose and kind of munching away. And these worms really are right on the surface. They're really only in the first like three or four inches of sand. So I absolutely believe that whiting would be sticking their nose around on these shallow sandbars and sucking up the worms. That's why they love them so much because um, it's what they feed on a lot of the time. You can see the yabby holes, but you can see next to it, there's a contrast. See the size of a yabby hole and then all the squirt worm holes, all the little ones. See, those squirt worm holes are about maybe three or four millimetres across in comparison to a yabby hole, which is probably about a centimetre in width. And see all those little baby worm holes. When we walked out here to sort of get some worms, we could see some big whiting in the shallow water. So it would even be really good just to fish wherever you're getting worms, you could fish there. So that wind's um, making it a little bit hard to see. All right, look at that. Wow, that's another good little hole there. You can see this one's in its case. 
like you can see it's, a, it's inside its actual case which is fine because you can pick up the whole case with the worm in it because they live within they live in like a a sock a sandy sock you see him coming out there he's crawling out of the sock look at them all Look, there's a green one. He's going through and he's going to come out underneath. Look at him, he's a green one. He's going all the way through. He'll end up on my hand. Yep, there he is. Look at him. Look at that, a green squirt worm. Look, it only takes one, one suck. There's another like greeny one. That one's huge. That one is a beast. Look at him. He's an absolute beast. There's some really nice squirt worms. Oh, come here. They break so easily. Well, I've got some really nice squirt worms. So I'm looking forward to coming down in a few hours time when the current slows down and everything goes quiet because when you get that slack period in between the high and low tide, oftentimes when there's a strong current, the fish will just sit there and relax in the current without expending too much energy. But when the current stops, then they start moving around in search of food because they don't have to fight with the current. So that's the whole strategy around fishing at that time. So we're back down at the edge of the lake for a fish now. We caught our beautiful bait this morning. I'm just land based. I'm standing on the edge of a sandbar. I'm going to flick those worms out into, into the relatively shallow water. So you know you don't need a boat. Actually with a lot of lake fishing you can access some really good places without having a boat. Great if you have one, but if you don't have a boat, you're not disadvantaged in any way at all. So I'm going to whack a bit of um, squirt worm on. I've actually put a couple of different hooks on. I might get the other one first. Um, I'm only using six pound leader, six pound fluorocarbon, because my target species really is whiting and possibly brim. And so you can see I've just got a really small long shank hook. On this one, this is a size 10, like a size 10 worm hook or long shank hook because the squirt worms are a fairly delicate, delicate bait and you don't want a hook that is too thick. So I'm, as you can see the worms I've got in there, there's a few worms there. Alrighty, so I'm going to grab a squirt worm. Look at that. He's still alive but he's slowed down a bit. So it's the same sort of procedure like putting on a beach worm. Just want to get the front of the worm and just gently thread it onto the hook so that the hook is going down the middle of the worm. It looks like this worm's going to um, be just a good size to go on this hook. And uh, there you go, so there you go, that looks pretty good. That is your squirt worm on that little size 10 long shank. Once again, it's a very basic rig. I've got a little ball sinker. Not quite as big as a Malteser, smaller than that. Um, with my, just to a swivel, with my worm bait down there. These rods that I'm using today are actually the same rods that I used the other day off the beach, fishing for whiting. It's actually great fun doing that, using little light lines like this. So I'm gonna flick, I've got two with me. I'm gonna hold one, I'm gonna flick one out and leave it as a set line. But my plan also is to try a couple of different spots. I'm going to have a fish here to see how we go and then I might go along to another part of the lake shore and try another spot. Just, you know, it depends on if there's many fish here or not. If I'm not having success here, I'll actually, I won't give up and go home. I'll try a different spot. So I'm going to walk out a little bit. <coughs> it's not very deep out there. I can see it's probably only a meter or so deep out on this shallow sandbar. And I'm hoping that there's some whiting going to be sniffing around out there. The channel here is not very deep. So I'm going to... I was mindful of not being too aggressive with the cast, but the bait I could see held on, held on pretty well, so... That, that should be good. On my other rod I've got a different hook. I'm trying two different hooks. 
It's also a worm hook, but it's a fair bit bigger. So we're just going to see how that goes. I'm going to put this in the rod holder and leave a bit of slack line so that if something picks it up, it has a bit of slack line before it feels anything. So I'll leave that one there. I'll be able to hear if a fish gets on there because I hear my drag. This one also has a six pound leader, but the hooks, it's a worm hook as well, but you can see when I show you, it's a bit bigger. It's got a much wider gape. It's still relatively thin. This hook actually has, I can see why they call it, it's got a very small barb on it to hold the worm on. So I'll find another worm. This is the head of the worm, the thickest part of the worm that I put on first. And just gently feeding that on, trying to keep the hook in the middle of the worm. And I kind of pull the worm up the hook a little bit as I work away along it. I just grab it by the head and pull it up. It's quite soft, I don't want it to break off. I want to try and have the whole hook covered. But that looks good. So this is hook number two. That still looks pretty good to me. A nice little wormy bait. And I'm going to chuck it out. I threw this one over there, so I'm going to chuck this one out maybe 10 metres to the side. Um, I don't want to put my two lines in the same spot. I want to cover a little bit of ground. I might cast this one out near this channel marker a little bit to the side of the channel marker. Sometimes you get brim and different fish hanging around channel markers because there's weed growing on there and crabs and things. So I'm going to walk out here. It's starting to get a little bit deeper. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's kind of out there. So now it's really a little bit of a waiting game. It's very quiet type of fishing compared to being on the beach or in the ocean. But you know, it's a great relaxing thing away from all the busyness of life. It's really good to get your mind away from lots of stuff sometimes. It's so easy. There's so many things that are vying for our attention all the time. Especially nowadays with social media and computer and all sorts of things. It's just so many things coming at you. Even on your phone, there's a million notifications, you know. <laughs> it's really good to actually escape from all of that. Oh. oh, I put my rod down for a second. Actually, this is pulling line. I've got to watch out for this post that's out there. It's only in the water for a minute. I'm hoping it's not a stingray because you know sometimes I've fished in here with worms before, not squirt worms, with beach worms, and stingrays have been a pest. No, it's not a stingray. <laughs> yes! Look at that. Look at a peel line. Wow. I can see it's actually quite a big brim. It's beautiful looking fish, really silver in this water. Man, it liked that squirt worm. It's coming in. I didn't bring my net over here, so I'm going to just tire him out and then bring him into the shore and wash him up on the beach. Bearing in mind I've only got that light six pound leader. You can't force things. Look at this guy. Wow, what a great looking fish. I'm gonna come over this way. He's a stunning fish.
can see him. Have a look at that. He's hooked in the side of the mouth. Really awesome. That's a great eating fish, that one. Just going to bring him up here. Well, I was actually expecting whiting more than brim, but I'm certainly not going to complain about that. You can see the abundance of nipper holes here. There you go, look at that. So that's pretty cool with the, the old squirt worm. And that was some, um, that's got that slightly larger hook. You can see, you can see where he's got it right there. Look at all the mole, look at all the teeth on this guy. Have a look at these brim teeth. You can see the molars all down underneath on his bottom jaw. Man, I tell you what, if you put your finger in there and he clamped down hard, he'd draw blood well and truly. Well, that actually didn't take very long to get a bite. The other one hasn't got a bite, but I, I threw it over near that pole on purpose because I thought, well, sometimes when I've been snorkeling, I've seen lots of fish around those sorts of places. So I'm going to put this guy in the bag and then get another bait out. Oops. Hmm. Got another worm here. This one's green. They kind of come in slightly different colours. It's a green squirt worm. So that guy kind of goes halfway up the hook. Now I've got a green one and half of a pink one. So it'll be a two-tone. So that's what that bait's going to look like in the end, like that. But for a fish I think that's pretty, pretty delectable. So I'm just going to whack this one out again then I'm going to check my other line. The breeze is blowing across a bit, so I think I'm going to go on the right hand side of this channel marker this time. Yeah, I only landed about 10 feet to the side of that channel marker and a little bit beyond it. Time to check this one. Alrighty. Let's see if this bait's been taking. There's some big storm clouds coming. I had no bait left on this one. This line had no bait left on it. The hook was clean, so something's knocked it off. Look at that. That's a pretty good bait. That's a nice squirt worm bait. I'm going to whack it out. <coughs> whack it out into the midst of where all the boats go past. Oh, look at that. This rod is going. <laughs> it's on again. I like the sound of that. Okay, I'll just see how it goes. I think I'll just stand here and bring it to the net. It could be another brim, possibly. Kind of fighting similar to the last one. It's going over to the left. I can see my sink has gone right up the line. Man, he's going around the corner. I'm going to have to walk around the other rod. He's going right up around the corner. Oh. Where am I? Oh, I think I've taken a bit of line then. I'm well, hoping he hasn't tangled my other line, but maybe he has.
Oops. Get away from the pole. There he is. Okay. So I'm not going to use the net. I can pick him up, I think. He looks like he's not going to fall off. Another lovely brim. Gotcha. Yeah, another awesome fish. You know, really, our, our lakes and rivers have an abundance of these fish. Doesn't matter where you are up and down the coast. You can pretty much do this in just about any lake. I used to fish like this in Sydney at Narrabeen, which is right in the middle of a highly populated area, but there's heaps of fish there. Same thing with Pittwater, Sydney Harbour. All of those places are really good. And then right up and down the coast. So I'm going to go and put this in my keeper net. So it's two fish, two nice brim that have come in on the, um, on the squirt worm so far. Oh, it got had a bite then, didn't it? Something had a go at it. It's got that small hook. There could be a fish on it. Look at the length of this squirt worm. It's a pretty decent size. So he's going to go nicely on this hook. You know, you can find these worms in, in pretty much every estuary. All the way up and down the coast of New South Wales, Queensland. Anywhere where you can find nippers, you'll generally find the squirt worms as well. So I was mentioning earlier when I was catching bait that nipper holes are generally about a centimetre across or a little bit bigger. But squirt worm holes are very obvious I think I better check my other line. Squirt worm holes are very obvious, and but they're only about three mils across. Just they look like little black dots on the sand. So I'm going to pull the other one in before I chuck this one out. I think. Oh no, nah, I won't. I'll chuck this one out, and then I'll pull the other one in. <laughs> I can feel rain. I think that's in a similar spot to my last cast. And it's got a good bait on it, so the chances are pretty high. All right, so I'm going to leave a little bit of slack line with that one and then check this other one. And when I was walking in the water a minute ago, I think I saw a big whiting near, right on the edge. Yeah, this has got a fish on it doesn't feel very big so it's helped itself to that other worm you know well, I've only had one bait one my line came in one of them with um oh man it pulled hard that actually felt a little bit more like a whiting than a brim I mean he was just there so I didn't get to see it oh well man what I've um so far I've had four casts, I've hooked three fish and lost one bait. So that's a pretty good, um, pretty good average actually. It's another one of those green ones. Green worm. Alright, I'm going to chuck this one out in some shallower water along the side of the bank just for something different. Just to see, it's going to go on a bit of an angle. see if there's any whiting sniffing around in the shallows. So I'm going to flick that. It's not very deep just there. We'll wait and see what happens. I think that last fish, because I've got such a small hook, perhaps what that's why it didn't hook up very well. But I'm just experimenting with the different hooks. But that's a bite. It's getting a bite, yeah. Alright, so something's going on here. Gonna, gonna, yeah, got it. Woo! It's also not a small fish either. Look at this. 
I cast this one out onto the shallows. Unfortunately, the last one I lost, the hook came out and I have a feeling it was a nice size whiting. But um, <coughs> I didn't get to see it. I haven't hooked any small, really small fish yet. They've all been good sized fish. Now this one's getting closer. Ah, oh, it's not what I want. <laughs> it's our um, stingray friend. So, so that's what grabbed it when I cast it in the shallow water, the stingray. So I'm just gonna bring him up on the shore and remove him. And I can see he's only lipped, so he'll be easy to get off the hook. He was trying to flick his tail around and get me. You know, even on this small stingray, you can still see, you can see the spikes on the back of his tail. He can, sw he can swim out from the shallows back out to the deep. Off you go, mate. He's thinking, what just happened? You know, most of these squirt worms are actually really good size. Look at that, look at that guy, look at that. You know, that's an amazing bait, that squirt worm, and, and they've really, I rarely fish with them, but it's been so awesome, so very effective. Certainly encouraged to do a bit more fishing with the old squirt worm. Look at that, something's taken that one. They've liked the look of it. It's still biting, so I just reckon I'm going to wind. Yep, got a fish. Doesn't feel very big though. Oh, it's on the surface of the water. What is that? Surely it's not a tailor or something like that. Oh no, it's just a little brim. Look, he's water skiing. No, look at that, a mullet. Hey, how's that? I had a feeling that mullet might like squirt worms. Now that's a quality mullet. You could eat that or very good for bait as well. What a cracker. Look at that, he's completely swallowed the squirt worm. I think that's fish poop. Oh. Now I'm going to keep this mullet. I could eat him just because um, I'm sure he'd be beautiful to eat. Just a delicate little mullet. But I've either got the option of eating him or using him for bait. Oops, because he's swallowed the hook. It didn't take very long to get a bite on that last cast. I think we've only been here for maybe half an hour in total anyway, not very long. I'm gonna check my other line. Because this one, Probably had the bait nipped, I reckon. No, it's just got something sitting on it. <laughs> Would you believe that? It didn't run with it, but there's a fish sitting on it. I have a feeling it's um, a small brim, that's what it feels like. Ah, oh, no, it's not. It's a different species of fish. Oh, and it's fighting harder now. Whoa. I'm pretty sure he swallowed the hook, so I'm gonna risk not netting him. Because I've got the mullet in the other the other one. But Yo, look at that, Mr. Whiting. Very good. He was, he had obviously swum along and just sucked up, sucked up that worm and was just, just sitting there. Oh. I know where this fish is going. Wow, that's amazing. This has been an awesome session. It's only been, like I said, maybe half an hour. I've got two quality brim, a good sized mullet, a whiting, I'm pretty sure I dropped a whiting earlier, near, just near my feet. I don't think it was hooked that well. 
But man, how effective are these worms? They're amazing. Really good. I'm going to put this guy in my net. Amazing. Yeah, that one's probably, the line's gone a bit taut. Something's probably happened. It could even have a fish on it, but I'll chuck this one out. Yeah, that line is, um, I left a bit of slack line out on that one, but it's quite taut now, so it's possible something's grabbed that is, as well. Either that or it's um, knocked the bait off. Okay, so there may be a fish on this one. A sleeper. I hope there is. Do we have a sleeper fish? No, for the first time, no. Actually, I need to put a little bit more slackness in this line. Yeah, I don't want it too taut. Most of my bait's gone. There's a little bit of a shower at the moment. But thankfully it's not winter. I have to give a shout out to my camerawoman. She's just a total trooper. Because it's 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 a the breeze, it's just a light breeze, it's pretty cold and it's raining. But I don't really want to stop fishing. Because I'm um, just having a great time and catching some beautiful eating fish. My other line just looks a bit taut. Maybe it's the current. Yeah, no, it's getting a bite. Oops, there you go. I'm just a little bit concerned about this pole that's out there. Because if it goes around the pole, it could, uh, the line's only light. Just the abrasion. Where is it? Yeah, it has gone around the pole. So I'm going to walk out to the side. I want to try and get away from that pole. Oh, I can feel it rubbing on the pole now. I really can. Can I get this fish away from it? Because it would have barnacles and oysters and all sorts of things on it. It's gone around the pole. Bugger. I can feel my line stuck on that pole. Yeah, it's wrapped on the pole. I don't really want to get wet. I'd have to have a swim to get out there. Look, I can still feel the fish pulling. Get away from that pole, man. Oh, well, I'm going to risk getting a little bit more wet. I, I think that, you know, I'm a bit concerned for my line because my line right, rubbing up against there, it's not going to be good for the line. Uh, I, I'm not confident I'm going to get this back. Yep. And I'm concerned also that my line's going to have fraying along it from where it's rubbing up against the barnacles on the edge of that pole. That felt like another good fish. I'm just pulling the line through my fingers to see if I can feel any abrasions. The line on this reel is relatively new. Actually, um, no abrasions so far. And I got all the way down to my fluorocarbon leader, which there's only about three feet left of leader. So it's a matter of re-rigging. Darn it, that was a fish and it did the naughty thing. It went around an obstacle. Oh well, it's a mother of a stingray. Oh, did you see it take off? It's a really big stingray just came up. Oh, 
Oh man, just threw it out and didn't make it back to the rod holder. Now stay away from that pole. Oh. I'm going to lean into it a bit because I don't want it to get it go around the pole. Feels good. I'm pretty sure it's not a stingray. Great fun on these light rods. Now is it a brim or a whiting? That's the, that's the question. It's going in a big arc around to my right at the moment. I can feel its head shaking. It's, I can feel its head going boom, 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 which is kind of more brimmy. What is this? You know what? I think it's a trevally. It's a, it's a trevally. You should see the, the um, bars on it, the stripes on this thing. They're really highlighted. Oh, man, he can fight. Bring him in over this way. Oh, look at that. It's water so crystal clear, the fish, you can see the fish. Here it is. Whoops. See the, see the stripes on it? Wow. Really, um... Just going around in circles at the moment, but you can see those stripes. Now I'm going to lift him up, even though it's only light line, I'm going to lift him up and grab him. Wow, that was some, um, oh, that was a quick bite. But that would be beautiful to eat, that fish. So, so far on these squirtworms today, I've got four species of fish. Actually, five if you include the stingray. Okay. Just going to put my rod in the rod holder. He's got a lot of strength, this fish. But there you go. How good are these squirt worms, eh? What have we been doing, not using them? I've noticed that the tide has changed. Whereas the water was slack before, it's starting to go out. So I did get a little bit of the slack water, period. Um, haven't had a bite on this one, which has been rare in today's session. And I'll whack it back out again. It's probably got no bait on it. Yep. So it has no bait. I'm just wondering why my, if it's the current that has put the bend in my line or whether something's taking that. Current would be all that strong, but no, it's it's just the current. So the um, the tide, as I mentioned, the tide's changed. So we've got the current starting to sweep out. So where I cast my lines out now, there's they're getting dragged to the left. While there was that slack period of water, I could throw my baits out, and there was no movement at all and it's just been bite after bite after bite. 
I still think you'd catch fish in this current, but what I might do is actually go along the shore to another spot where I might be a little bit out of the current. Oh, look at that rod. Oh, sugar. <coughs> Why would I change fishing spots? But I wouldn't mind trying another spot. Okay, so what have we got here? I'm hoping it's not another dinner plate size stingray. It's, I haven't felt any kicking yet. No kicking at all. Feels a little bit like a stingray. We'll, we'll just see what it is. Although I can feel like this kind of whack, 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 whack at the moment. Oh no, I can see silver. So it's not a stingray. It looks like it's slightly foul hooked on the side. Actually, it's another brim. I think um, my line's wrapped around one of his fins. Okay, so I'm going to gra just grab him because I can see that he's securely hooked. Well, that's another, another great lake fish. They absolutely are loving those, these squirt worms. How awesome. Oh, I, I am too. Is that rod bending? It's probably got a fish on it. Yeah. Oh well. Let's just see what's going on with that one. Okay, so I just had a bite. Oops, hooked myself. So I wonder if it actually just nicked the bait and didn't get hooked. Because um, it did bend over. Oh no, the fish is there. Wow. This has just been non-stop action. <coughs> okay, what do we got? Yeah, it's... It's another pest. Oops. Mr. Stingray. So I'm going to put him in the shallows here and uh, let him get his bearings. It's nice that the wind has stopped because it takes a little bit of that chilly edge off, especially when we start to get a little bit wet from the rain. chance to put this line back out yet because um, I just pulled that brim in on this one and then that that one went looks like I'm getting another bite on this other line but I want to chuck this one out yeah something's going on I really should pick it up Can I feel anything? I was getting a few little nibbles. Well, I think it's taken the bait actually. I'm still getting a nibble on that. It looked like it. Oh no, there is a fish on it actually. 
interestingly enough. But I'd swum in with it a, a bit. Oh, look at that one. It's bent over. Got a nice fish on this one, and that one's got a fish as well. Look at this. The lovely whiting. Look at that. Look at the colours of that fish in the water. You can see its yellow fins. So that one's got a fish on it as well. I'll have to get to that in a second, but that's a, a beautiful eating size whiting. That rod was really bending over, so I reckon there's a fish on there for sure. So this guy I'm putting in there. And I'm gonna go over to this one now and see what's on this line. Okay. So the question is brim whiting, stingray oil, or what? Oh, it's got a bit of weight in it. It feels too heavy for a brim or something. Oh, gone. No way, I lost it. I lost everything. It might have been a bigger stingray, I don't know. It felt really heavy. But um, I was trying to keep it away from the pole, but I've got nothing left. The only thing, it felt like it could have been, it could have even maybe been a big flathead, but I'm just going to chuck the other line out again. I have another rod to rig up. That's whatever that last thing was, unfortunately it took my setup. Well, I'm going to head back and re-rig it. I'm just keep my eye on this one. Yeah, it's going, is it? Oh, sugar. I'll come and get it. I could hear that drag go. It's still going, isn't it? It's really going. Okay, so what is it? That's the question. Just went over to um, re-rig my other line, but something's really pulled this drag. Pulling it across the other side of the, um, of the channel. I've just sort of got my drag set medium, not too tight, not too loose. I want to be able to hear it if I'm not near the rod. So... It pulled a fair bit of line actually. It's going to tighten the drag a little. I'm just being gentle with it because I don't know whether it's a quality fish or a stingray at this point. Man, it took a lot of line. It took so much line. And my sinker is about 20 feet up the line. Look, I've already got my sinker. My sinker is just here, floating in midair. It's going to go, Ew, there goes the sinker. Heading down the line, back down to the swivel. It doesn't feel like a stingray. I could be wrong. I don't want to set myself up. <laughs> it's feeling more like a decent brim. Like a big brim.
Oh yeah, look at this. Just coming in at my feet actually. Look at this guy, this is a, a really nice fish. Oh, it's a beauty. Look at this fish. I'll just bring him in a bit closer. It's the biggest brim today by a long way. Look at that. Look at this guy. Who says you can't have a lot of action fishing in a lake? I'm gonna pick him up because of his weight and the light, light leader. I've got, I can't, I'm struggling to get my hand around, around him. He's so thick. Get a load of that. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. So good. He swallowed it. And this line just had that tiny little size 10 long shank hook on it. But, you know, the thing is with these squirt worms, they're obviously just like lollies for the fish. They just, they're absolutely loving them. The amazing thing today is that I haven't caught an undersized fish. Every single thing I've hooked on these worms has been a quality eating fish. That's interesting, isn't it? Normally you catch lots of other little ones as well, but no little ones today. Okay, so <clears throat> can get that guy, work him in there, and then that's a nice feed of fish. And I could keep fishing because there's, there's just so many fish out there, but I have an abundance, I don't really need any more. How good are those squirt worms? I've had so much fun fishing with these squirt worms and it's just been constant action. I've got four different species of fish here that I can eat. I've got a couple of nice whiting, I've got a, a few brim, I've got a good sized trevally, I've even got a mullet. So just a beautiful catch of fish. If you've learned anything in today's video please let me know in the comments and if you haven't subscribed make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell because then you know when other videos are going to be coming out and it really helps my channel. I really appreciate it. I'll see you next week in another video.